Thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction. I'm going to do uh, essentially three things in my opening remarks, and we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, I want to talk about what China's interests are in Africa. Second, I uh, want to discuss the current state of uh, security relations between African countries and China. And third, briefly try to look into the future and see where the security relationship is going. Uh, let me start with the Chinese interests in Africa. And when I talk about interests, this is what China wants from Africa. It's not what China can do for Africa, but it's what it wants, which is a very different concept. Uh, so I don't talk about the win-win relationship and all of that good stuff. Uh, I'm looking at sort of hard things that China wants. I would start with first uh, item that China is interested in from Africa is access to raw materials. Uh, Eighty-five percent of all of China's imports from Africa are raw materials, and that's been a pretty consistent figure over the last couple of decades. Twenty-two percent of China's imported oil comes from Africa. Uh, even larger percentages of critical minerals come from Africa. Uh, things like cobalt, tantalum, and manganese. What all of this does is to help sustain uh, China's very impressive industrial economy, and what that in turn does is to help keep the Communist Party in power, and that is, after all, the bottom line in terms of China's domestic situation. China's second interest in Africa is to increase its own exports to Africa. Why? Because it earns foreign exchange for China. Uh, Africa has well over one billion people now, and when I talk about Africa, I include both North Africa and Sub-Saharan. I don't make a distinction. Uh, and more importantly, Africa has growing numbers of consumers who have uh, expendable income. Uh, it's simply becoming wealthier. There are a lot of poor people in Africa yet, but nevertheless, it is becoming wealthier. So it's a more attractive export market for countries like China that produce so many things that uh, the rest of the world wants. The third interest that China has in Africa is the political support of as many African countries as it can possibly obtain. Uh, Africa's 54 countries constitute more than one quarter of the membership of the United Nations. Uh, China often supports African countries and the Security Council, where it has veto power, the ability to amend resolutions that might be critical of Afri certain African countries. And the African countries, many of them, can do the same thing for China, particularly when it comes to issues like human rights. Uh, Africans often support, the, uh, support China in the uh, UN Human Rights Council and sometimes work to support China in other, other international organizations like the World Trade Organization. The fourth interest that China has in Africa is to end Taiwan's diplomatic presence in Africa. Now, several years ago, there were still four countries in Africa that recognized Taiwan. Today, there's only one country left, Eswatini. Uh, that recognizes uh, Taiwan, but there nevertheless is an unrelenting insistence by China on the One China Principle, and this still remains an interest, uh, although it is uh, a diminishing interest in terms of Africa. The, uh, the fifth and the last interest that China has in, um, in Africa is to minimize the impact in Africa of a whole series of potential negative issues that could uh, negatively impact China, things like terrorism, international crime, narcotics trafficking, piracy, pandemic diseases that might spread to China. Uh, in other words, China is interested in ensuring that none of these things harms its interests or its personnel, either those who are in Africa or those who are actually living in the homeland. Uh, Chinese nationals are increasingly um, in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, get mixed up in, in terrorist attacks. A lot of it's just ordinary crime that they encounter, and it wants to minimize that prospect because it gets criticized by its own people back home if it doesn't protect Chinese nationals. 
You've had small numbers of Africans engaged in narcotics uh, trafficking in China. Uh, some have been jailed. You've had Chinese ships and crews that were attacked by Somali pirates. Uh, piracy is essentially over with now in the Gulf of Aden, but this was a major issue for China if you go back uh, 10 years or so. Now, just by comparison, you might ask, well, gee, if that's your definition of, of China's interests in, in uh, Africa, what are American interests in Africa? And this will be a different list than you'll get from the State Department. Uh, I would say that first, uh, America's interest in Africa is to maintain access to raw materials, uh, particularly oil, although that is a declining interest. Uh, the United States is now the world's leading producer of petroleum products, although it still does import some oil, but much less than it used to. Uh, second, the U.S. wants to increase exports to Africa, earns foreign exchange for the United States. Third, it wants to obtain maximum African political support in international forums. Uh, it wants the votes of African countries, too. Fourth, it wants to minimize the impact in Africa of terrorism, narcotics trafficking, international crime, piracy, and money laundering so they don't harm U.S. interests either in Africa or in the homeland. In other words, four of the five interests that China has in Africa, the U.S. has. The only one the U.S. does not have is uh, the issue of the One China policy or recognition of Taiwan. Uh, I would argue that the United States has one additional interest that China does not yet have, although it's moving in this direction. I don't include it yet. I may be including it in the coming years. And that is the United States wants to have U.S. naval access to African ports, the ability of military aircraft to overfly African countries, land in African airports. Uh, the United States has a military base in Djibouti. It has drone operations in several other African countries, and it has a, a, a far more significant military presence on the continent than China does. Uh, China does not yet have these kinds of um, uh, security interests on the continent, but they're starting to appear, and we see that with its first overseas base anywhere in the world in Djibouti, and also with growing numbers of uh, ship visits to African ports. Let me turn now to the current state of, um, of China's security relationship with Africa. It all began, as many of you will recall, uh, with support Chinese support for African liberation movements, going back to the late 1950s, continuing into the 60s and 70s, sometimes supporting uh, liberation leaders who ultimately became the leaders, uh, presidents of their country. Uh, having said that, though, uh, Africa remains a relatively low security priority for China as compared to all of the countries on China's periphery or the major Western powers. Uh, Africa is just not in the same league as that. But China relies increasingly on Africa for primary products, and as a result, there is a security interest in the continent. China has some kind of security link with every African country with which it has diplomatic relations, which is 53 out of the 54. In some cases, it's nothing more than exchange military visits. From 2008 to 2012, China's share of conventional arms deliveries to all of Africa was 8%. It increased to 17% from 2013 to 2017. Russia was the largest supplier at 39%, most of that going to North African countries. If you exclude North Africa, however, which is a much larger importer of arms than Sub-Saharan Africa, China supplied Sub-Saharan Africa with 16% of its arms from 2008 to 2012, and this increased to 27% from 2013 to 2017, making China the largest supplier of military equipment to sub-Saharan Africa during that uh, latter period. And these figures exclude small arms and light weapons simply because we don't have good numbers or good statistics on small arms. It's easy to track large conventional weapons by satellite or by monitoring ports, uh, it's very hard to monitor crates of AK-47s that might be coming in.
China has 22 defense attaches in Africa. Some are credited to multiple countries. Uh, there actually are more African defense attaches in Beijing than there are Chinese attaches in Africa. There are some 35 uh, African defense attaches living in Beijing. As China's presence in Africa uh, expands, Chinese nationals increasingly are subject to attack. Uh, there's been a long history of that. Uh, the best known case was the evacuation from Libya in 2011 of 36,000 Chinese, mainly contractors, who were working on construction projects. Uh, Libya started to um, return to normal. The Chinese started to return to Libya, uh, only to find that in 2014 they had to evacuate another 1,000 Chinese out of the country. Uh, also in 2014, you had 10 Chinese construction workers kidnapped in Cameroon by Boko Haram. 2015, you had three senior managers killed during a terrorist attack at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Bamako, Mali. Uh, in 2016, two Chinese peacekeepers were killed and two seriously injured during an attack uh, in Juba, in South Sudan. And as I noted earlier, since 2008, China has been involved in the anti-piracy operation in the Gulf of Aden, where it has continues to supply uh, two frigates and a supply ship to the anti-piracy operation. It took that action because of attacks on Chinese shipping in the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. And by and large, it's received praise for its um, conduct in the anti-piracy operation, including from Western sources. China contributes about 2,100 troops, staff officers, and experts to five of the seven UN peacekeeping operations in Africa. That's far more than any other permanent member of the UN Security Council, but it's far less than countries like Rwanda, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, and India provide uh, to peacekeeping operations in Africa. Uh, China is the second largest contributor to the UN peacekeeping budget at 10 percent of the total budget. However, this compares to 28 percent of the budget which is provided by the United States, which is the largest contributor to the budget. And again, China's performance in supporting UN peacekeeping operations in Africa has largely been praised uh, by, by Africans and by uh, the United Nations and, uh, and even the United States. Uh, China has in Djibouti its first military base outside of China. It's a fairly sizable facility. It's located very close to the American uh, military base in Djibouti. Uh, we don't know exactly how many uh, Chinese are assigned there, but the, uh, according to most reports, there is underground housing for up to 10,000 Chinese nationals, although there are not 10,000 nationals there today. Uh, probably a couple thousand would be the best estimate as to how many there actually are there. Uh, the point is that it's a, it's a very significant facility with a helicopter landing pad, uh, K's for several ships, uh, Navy ships to come in, and it uh, is a very much of a permanent facility. Turning to the future and trying to come up with a couple of thoughts as to where all of this is leading, I think it, from, and I'm, I am simply speculating here, but it, it's, I think, safe to say that, one, China is engaged um, in Africa on a long-term basis, both economically, politically, and from a security standpoint. It, um, it very much sees Africa as part of its um, Belt and Road Initiative uh, and as part of uh, its uh, foreign policy future. If you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, for example, it's largely an economic initiative. But I think it's an economic initiative with perhaps a slightly hidden goal. As you increase economic dependency of countries around the world, uh, not just African countries, but wherever the Belt and Road happens to go, you sort of indirectly increase a dependency on security and political issues. Uh, strong economic ties normally lead to stronger security and political ties. And I would argue that's one of the goals of, uh, of China in Africa today. Uh, I think you're going to see in the future, 
uh, more and more Chinese naval visits to African ports uh, all around the continent, including the west side of the continent. Uh, you're going to probably see uh, requests for either uh, permanent uh, basing arrangements, military basing arrangements, or if not that, uh, some kind of contractual arrangement where China will be allowed uh, to access uh, African ports pretty much on a guaranteed basis without having to request a lot of advance permission. In other words, the security relationship is going to deepen as China expands its global power, and China has made very clear it has every intention of becoming a global military power, uh, sea power and otherwise. Uh, it's not there yet in terms of competing with the United States, but it has every intention of doing so. I've just come back from um, visits to Ethiopia, Eritrea, Yemen, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain, and with discussions with uh, host government nationals and others at all of these locations, and there seems to be pretty much of a consensus that China is very much uh, committed to increasing its security interaction throughout this part of the world, and, and I would argue it will go well beyond. So hopefully I have opened um, the door for a number of ideas uh, that you want to discuss in the Q&A session, and after Yun has her presentation, we can, uh, we can chat about whatever you want to chat about. Thank you very much.